Welcome to the What I Meant to Say podcast. I'm your host, Wendy Jones, founder of Be Better Media and a mom of four, passionate about human connection. Some of these stories contain sensitive content about real life events and all of the information in this podcast and from anywhere on the Be Better Media website is for informational purposes only. If you find that you need help, which we all do from time to time, please reach out to a licensed professional for help. This one's gonna blow your mind. Today I sat down with Dr. Kent Holtorf. His practice, located in El Segundo, California, is on the cutting edge of advanced integrative medicine. As an MD, his perspective on the world of healthcare is illuminating. I'm so excited to have Dr. Kent Holtorf on what I meant to say today to talk about peptides and better medicine. And there are just so many things I've learned in my health journey of, you know, aging and anti-inflammatory and trying to keep my kids healthy. Um, Full-time job now. It is a full-time job. And when just recently, I'm so grateful that our paths have crossed and I've learned about peptides and I wanted to have you in here today just to um, learn more and educate people because I just don't think people know this is out there. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. And it's a full-time job just keeping my friends and family healthy. You know, and going to the doctors like they're doing what? Like, yeah. aren't they looking at this or that? Yes. Yeah, and everyone's sick now with, you know, chronic multi-system illnesses that our system is not set up to, to fix. Yeah, so as when you say our system, are you talking about the, the sick the, care? The standard. The standard care of Western medicine. Yeah. Now, describe to me um, your practices in El Segundo. Um, tell me about, um, what's the focus of your practice? Yeah, I always hate that question because I don't know (laughs) it's kind of anything that no one else can wants to treat or can figure out it's these multi-system patients that you know the way kind of standard medicine works with insurance model you have to see patients really about eight minutes with them and then with paperwork about 15 20 minutes and if you get a sick patient our patients have like you know every system there's something wrong with it and they don't want those patients. It's gonna, you know, the the way they have to be basically cost effective for their hospital. So they're gonna see, you know, X amount of patients. And if they're seeing one patient's clogging up their time, like they'll say, oh, you can have one uh, symptom, you know, one complaint today yes. and then come back. And they also, you know, you got all these specialists, so they'll just turf to, oh, Neurology, you know, you got you got anything wrong, you got a headache, you got, you know, peripheral neuropathy, go to the neurologist. Oh, you got some chest pain, you'll go to the uh, cardiologist. Oh, your TSH is high. Instead of just treating it, oh, go to the endocrinologist. And that yeah. takes weeks. Or or the PD, you know, hip pain. And it just takes so long. And Or to get an MRI, um, I mean, just months, you know, yeah. and, and the cost is just is crazy. Right. And, uh, and it's all, be- it's such an inefficient system. Yeah. And, and it doesn't work. If you fit inside a box, you break your leg or something like that. Okay. It's, it, it's good for that. But if you have these things that the doctors like to say, oh, we, we're not even sure we believe in it, right? Mm-hmm. Because the patient will come in and they'll check a CBC, a chem panel, a couple other tests, and then go, oh, you're healthy, you know? And, but if you don't do the right tests, you're not gonna find anything. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing we found is really looking at particular biomarkers, and we'll do 30, 40 tests on a patient. And although I can tell you what's likely gonna come back low, Part of my job is to prove to the patient that this is what's going on so they will follow treatment. Right? Mm-hmm. And because everyone's been telling them, oh, it's, it's made up, da da da. We have people in the ICU and the doctor's going, oh, we need a psych consult because it's made up. And then once they see it on paper and they're like, oh my gosh, you know. And, and the interesting thing is, is that a lot of these chronic illnesses have at the core immune dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And I don't know any doctors who check that, even the immunologists don't check it. And and they don't get, it's also the core of aging, you know? Right. And so basically as we age, your thymus, which actually is here in your, your, the thyroid, I'm used to that, uh, is right in your breastbone. Mm -hmm. It starts involuting, you know, early on in adolescence. And as that drops, so think of your body as having two sides to your immune system. One's called Th1, one's called Th2. And this, we also put Tregs in there. 
which are the cells that kind of control autoimmunity, and then TH2 and TH17, which cause like autoimmunity. Now, as you get older and the thymus involutes, it starts going like this. So your TH1, which is the kind of first responder, gets stuff inside the cell, uh, and TH2 gets stuff outside the cell. So as this shifts, and then what also speeds it up dramatically, stress, and stress is a big killer. It really yeah, is. Describing regular everyday life for most Americans. Yep, and we're not made yeah. for all this, you know. I remember when I was young even, and you know, we write a letter, wait a couple of weeks, we didn't have computers, we didn't have cell phones. Yeah. Now it's like instant, you know, gratification. Oh, why didn't they text me back? Uh, we got traffic, we got, you know, just so many things to deal with. We're not made for that constant stress. Yeah. And, and people think of it lowering the immune system kind of like steroids, but it doesn't. It lowers that TH1, raises that TH2, which causes inflammation. So the body's trying to fight this inflammation. They also found that fast food, the body acts like it's an infection and it drives it like this even more. And when people eat fast food. Fast food, yeah. Wow. Because of the, the fats that are the, the yeah, different type no, of fats. I believe that are it. In there. And the way it makes you feel, it makes perfect sense to me. I mean, I haven't yeah. been a fast fooder for a and, long time, but. And so if, if, if you look at you know, the thymus, as that activity declines about five years later, that's when all those diseases of aging start. So that's when you start getting, you know, basically osteoporosis, you start getting autoimmunity, cancer, because for instance, the downstream marker we use for this TH1 is natural killer cell function. So it's, it's a cell that looks for intracellular infections and cancer. And that's when cancers start, that's when, and then you have this high TH2, we start getting autoimmunity, uh, we start getting, you know, uh, brain inflammation, mm -hmm. inflamed all over, you get cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's, neurodegenerative diseases, and all those things are occurring much earlier now. But in medical school, you're not, nobody's training doctors to test for this natural oh, killer no. cell? No. So if we got downstream in Western medicine and started like we would be able to get ahead of a lot of these things that you're describing. Oh, yeah, so you look at, okay, if, and even the CDC says that 80% of people have at least one chronic illness due to the involution of the thymus, okay? Mm -hmm. If that's the case, why not give back thymic peptide? And that's what stimulates it, you know, the thymus uh, secretes and shown to be totally safe. They've done studies on a thousand times the dose, no side effects. Wow. And you know, that side effects are less cancer, less cardiovascular disease. Uh, for instance, and there's another uh, peptide called epitalin and uh, from the pineal gland. Okay. And people think of pineal gland, they think of melatonin, but it actually controls, we kind of think of hormones as kind of like the matching that rules the body. But the peptides are another layer that fine tunes all that. Okay, so I was just gonna say, let's take a step back and just for people who have never heard of a peptide. Yeah, like how, what the what heck is, is a peptide? peptide? Yeah. And a lot of doctors ask that because I'll, I'll give talks, I just got back from Boston to teach, you know, uh, teach doctors. And I go through all these studies and they're like, how have we not heard of this when there's so many studies? Because they're not patentable. They've been around for about 40 years in Europe and so the, so Europe's way ahead of us in this yeah yeah and why are they not patentable uh, because they've been already out in the market okay. for over the length of a patent okay and so they don't they don't want to uh, touch it a <laughs> peptide is basically a chain of amino acids right? right and if it's longer by by this arbitrary definition if it's longer than 40 amino acids it's a protein mm -hmm. and if it's less it's a peptide yeah. and what they're finding is that very small peptides, like two amino acids, which they didn't, couldn't imagine um, would do anything, are now they're called bioregulators. They right. have a huge part in, in altering all these things and very epigenetically, uh, where it's gonna turn on the healthy genes and turn yeah. on the bad genes. And so with kind of the push to the, you know, looking at your genome, mm -hmm. um, say, well, you're at risk for this illness. And people will, 
you know, their risk for breast cancer, every, you know, the, all of it a little by breast, but no, the key is you turn off those genes yep. and then you turn on the good genes. Yeah. And which you can do through, you know, lifestyle and uh, a lot of things, you, you know, supplements, but peptides are very potent. And that's the thing, they're micrograms. Right. which is instead of, you know, supplements were used to milligrams a thousand times a dose. Right. So very, very tiny amounts. Yeah. Um, and, and so, and, and the first thing is that it's kind of a shock, right? That right. there's so, there's so many studies and it's it really, you know, it changed my life. Um, when I was so sick with the chronic Lyme, Babesia, Bartonella, went into heart failure, the cardiologist said maybe in 10 years you can get 10 percent better i could not stand up i could it would take me two hours to walk up a flight of stairs and i was like i can't live like this my heart was all fibrosed was this after medical school uh yeah 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 so you'd already been through trained as a western medicine doctor yeah and then went through your yeah. own major I started, health crisis i started i knew i wasn't normal uh let's say that uh, <laughs> yeah that? you know growing up and my parents my mom was just a sweating machine right oh, and there was not there's something not right my dad had chronic fatigue syndrome before there was chronic fatigue syndrome uh -huh. and my brothers have their own issues and kind of you know, mental disorders that we see a lot mm -hmm. with this chronic infections that are a huge cause of all these um, uh, psychological disorders I um, mean, it caused so many things, mm -hmm. autoimmunity, neurodegenerative diseases now, like um, McDonald, who was head of the Harvard Brain Bank, biopsied all these Alzheimer's patients, found 80% had Lyme disease, and they wouldn't let him publish it because uh, it caused too much panic, you know? Oh, and gosh. so most things are driven by chronic infection, which sets off uh, a vicious cycle, but it's kind of that triad where it's stress, uh, toxin, which we're all getting exposed to, but then especially if you get a particular, you know, type of toxin, or you know, now they're you know, sears, um, uh, which is mold, mm -hmm. uh, which is a huge problem. And if you're healthy enough and you get in a moldy environment, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. But if you have a pre-existing, you know, your uh, uh, basic immune system is not that healthy, you're the one who's going to get affected. And we're finding that. Emotional stress is probably the worst thing for your immune system, for your aging, and uh, it just it, it affects. I remember when I had you know the, the whole line was bed bound, just mm -hmm. sweating. I had uh, peripheral neuropathy, I had allodynia, like Jesse, where you couldn't even touch my skin. Mm -hmm. And my brother was big, you know, you know problem and so stressful. If the phone would even ring, He'd I just jump. I I You'd could jump. not take it. I mean, what? Well, how dare these people call it two in the afternoon, you know? Yeah. So your nervous system is on such high alert with those three things that are so interconnected all through American society. Like that is a part of everybody's day. I mean, yep. stress, toxins. Um, what was the third? What was the third? Part uh, of your triad? Chronic infections. Chronic. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and, and it could be infections you've had. Like people think, well, I've got a chicken fox. I'm over it. No, you're not. Body Still. just suppressed it and it comes back out of the shingle and your immune mm -hmm. system drops. So when you're, if someone gets shingles, you know they have low TH1 immunity. What do they do? They go get, uh, you know, a vaccine yeah. uh, when really they should just be boosting that that TH1 immunity. Yeah, and so what I'm gathering from the things that you're studying and, and helping implement in your practice, is that, like you're getting to the root cause of issues, whereas what we see in a lot of Western medicine now is just dying. Diagnosing the symptom, treating the symptom, and then something else pops and say, up. Here's an antidepressant. Yeah. Uh, get out. And if you notice what I just talked about, it sounds a lot like a lot of things like PTSD, mm -hmm. you know, like stress, hypervigilance, can't sleep, and just, yeah, up all night, brain on fire, can't remember anything, mm -hmm. body aches, peripheral neuropathy, gut issues. And then with this vicious cycle, what happens is the mitochondria are key. And the mitochondria are going to what's called a cell danger response. And they, instead of making energy, they start pumping out reactive oxygen species. So they cause more inflammation. And then that Is recruits... That your free radicals? Is yeah. that what's like... Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so everyone gets more inflamed as they get older. And if you look at someone with, let's say, congestive heart failure, or diabetes, 
and their cells are what you know in in senescence uh, they kind of shut down and they're not you know the body should get rid of them Right. But because of this low Th1, those cells, like natural killer cell, will get rid of the cells that are bad. Okay. Okay. But if that isn't working, now you have all these cells that are bad, are making all this inflammation. Now that makes everything worse. And there's some you know, new anti-aging uh, treatments that actually work now. You know, anti-aging people used to think, oh, cosmetic or mm -hmm. whatever it may be, um, that we can actually make people physiologically younger. And you find like people with, let's say, congestive heart failure, they have huge amount of senescent cells. If and there's ways to selectively knock out those cells, that Can you all of a sudden define senescent cells. Yeah, so those are the zombie cells that are they're not dead, but they're not functioning. For instance, in the heart, they're not working as heart cells, but they're just making uh, they're making inflammation. Yeah. Okay. And so they're. They're basically worse than just being there, yeah. you know. Um, and uh, and now we can selectively knock those out, and it reverses heart disease. I mean, uh, 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 congestive heart disease, mm -hmm. uh, diabetes, and all of a sudden, all the inflammation drops. So that's a a, a new thing you're going to hear a lot more about. And so what we do, like we treat the sickest of the sick. Like most of our patients have been to you know twenty doctors. Uh, when we published our literature 15 years ago, and that was before we had peptides, uh, patients saw on average 7.2 physicians before seeing us, and uh, they, without any improvement, and it was like 86% got significantly better by the fourth visit, 70 something percent, you know, uh, mm -hmm. dramatically better, and, and we published those results of 500 patients, and then we had 22 centers at the time, then did a 5,000 uh, patient and really it just mirrored those responses. And that was really looking at, again, the core treatments, which was, and a big passion of mine has been thyroid because it did, it helped me so much. Well, and the way that we tr test thyroid in most, if, if you walk into your regular doctor's office and they test your thyroid, most of the time they say you're okay. Tell me what happens like beyond that and what they're not testing. Yeah, and so I started a nonprofit, mm -hmm. the National Academy of Hypothyroidism, which the goal was to educate physicians and patients that the way we diagnose and treat thyroid in this country is wrong. And um, you look at you know uh, endocrinologist doctors, they get really 25 minutes in endocrinology on the thyroid because they go, well, uh, so when your thyroid levels drop, your pituitary should sense that and then raise thyroid stimulating hormone, right? So if your TSH is high, your thyroid's low. If your TSH is low, your thyroid's high. If it's normal, it's normal. So that's all they look at. And uh, we found that, I mean, literally thousands of studies, and I've published a number of review articles that, you know, each have 500 plus references showing that is wrong. The pituitary is different than every tissue in the body. When you get, especially when you're sick. Now, if you're totally healthy, not exposed to any toxins, no stress, you know, Which find that. Not try to find that person not for human. me. Yeah, yeah. Right. Is that the TSH goes down as your thyroid goes down, and so all these people are being misdiagnosed as normal thyroid. And oftentimes you give them, and they also, Synthroid is a standard mm -hmm. medicine or thyroxine T4, which then needs to go in the cell and convert to T3. It needs to be actively transported, right? Mm -hmm. So doctors assume that whatever's in the serum just diffuses in the cells, that's what's going on in the cell. What's going on in the cell is what matters. Mm -hmm. And, but again, coming back to the mitochondria, the mitochondria aren't working because there's no energy. The, the T, Four transporter is much more energy dependent than the T3. Okay. So if you give T4, it just doesn't get into the cell. So what happens is they have low TSH and a high T4, which we learn in medical school. Oh, I know what that is. That's high thyroid. It's low thyroid. And, and so doctors just get it totally wrong, and a chronologist get it totally wrong, and we'll do um, test, for instance, we'll check everyone's basal metabolic rate, which is 
the gold standard of thyroid, your metabolism. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how much oxygen that they're utilizing over 10 minutes. And that extrapolates to, um, you know, to the day. And we find that anyone who has a chronic illness, has dieted significantly, and interesting studies, and if you, see so if we diet three cycles, and there's a nice study okay. by Leibel um, uh, doing this and others, that your body will actually low, will, will, the metabolism will drop, right. and it won't go back to normal, even if you start eating normal. So when people right. say, I've wrecked my metabolism, mm -hmm. they've wrecked their metabolism, but right. no one believes them, oh, you're lazy, you're not working out. Yeah. And uh, so you need to intervene and give a special type of thyroid, for instance, T3, that gets into the cell. Mm -hmm. And the endocrinologists are not taught to give T3 because the, uh, by far, I think, um, the Synthroid is the number one, number two drug that is uh, uh, utilized. So they sponsor everything. Right. And so they're taught to use T4 and they go, oh, the naturally, convert to T3, well, not if you're sick. We're doctors, right. we intervene. Right. If this is not working, you gotta do something else. Right. And for instance, the STAR report, largest study ever done on antidepressants. Mm -hmm. They did all the antidepressants and they found that most of them didn't work. If they did, the people relapsed within a year. Mm -hmm. And they, they used T3 in that study and they found that T3 outperformed all the antidepressants. It worked when the antidepressants didn't Okay, and but it never made it to the abstract because they didn't contribute to, to the study. financial to the So study. you're hitting on something here, which I think also ties back into the peptide conversation, is that the big pharmaceutical companies are not making yeah. money off of T3 and, or peptides. And also, for instance, like bipolar patients, uh, one study, 135 treatment-resistant bipolar patients, they tried on average 14 different medications, no improvement. They just gave them T3, didn't matter what their thyroid levels were, right? Okay. And 85% responded and 35% total resolution of symptoms. Oh my god. Now, gosh. with no side effects. And also in that STAR report, the T3 had less side effects than the antidepressants. But doctors still, no, 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 you know. No, and when you think about how many drug commercials we watch on TV, and then the list of side effects that are out at the end, and then also on top of that, the opioid epidemic and the, the, this, yep. the, the addiction rates in this country are sky high, worse than they've ever been. Yep. And yet somehow... And addiction has to do with inflammation of the brain. Yeah. Yeah, it's all connected. So when you were talking about how you know medicine is, is parceled out into systems when we really know that everything's connected yep. and we're not treating the whole patient, and you also are, if you're, if you're treating a sick patient who has to go around and just get basically medically gaslit to think, yep. you and, know, oh, I'm, I'm yeah. trusting you, you're telling me what's wrong with me, but my intuition is something else, or I'm still feeling like this and whatever you're giving me isn't helping me. That also, I mean, talk about a mental health crisis, even just in that. Yep. And then, and then your family doesn't believe you right. and, you know, and if a doctor can't treat it, it's not their fault. It's your fault yeah yeah right and because they don't want you know it's kind of an, an ego thing yeah but, and I actually spent a, a lot of time looking at healthcare reform and I put together a package and oh, I'd love to see that. and I finally got it to uh, Paul Ryan through a connection and I had to sign a thing saying I won't quote him and so he looked at it and said, sent back saying it was very well thought out and it makes sense but do you know how many people are slurping off the trough of healthcare? They will never go anywhere, you know. And this insurance model is just a big scam. It's like, for instance, if we do labs on patients mm -hmm. and all of a sudden insurance doesn't cover for whatever reason, they charge a patient five times as much. Um, and if they bill us, then it's about one fifth. But the problem is, like California says, well, you can't upcharge labs. I, I get that, but if we're a you know a dollar off if we get billed, uh, then we can go to jail for upcharging labs when we just you know try to do a favor. You know. Yeah. And no. and they come after doctors for like that. You know. It's nuts. Right. And the doctors are in there doing the everyday work, trying to help people get better. But actually, but getting back to those doctors, they're not being trained in the manner that you have now educated yourself through this 
you know, right. your process. Right. I would, How do we get this information on peptides and better medicine and the thyroid, what the inconsistencies in what they're being taught? Yeah. How do we get that out there to doctors and patients? Yeah, and let me let me mention because you know I w- was very evidence based physician. I'm still a very evidence based physician, and it is it is grilled into you that alternative medicine, integrative, all that means no evidence, right? And so when I was sick and they would go to the university doctor, oh, you're distressed, you're taking antidepressant. I go, I'm not depressed, I can't function, I can't think. Oh yeah, you know, don't, don't worry about it. I'm like, I don't think I can continue medicine. And um, I originally went into anesthesia, I figured, because I couldn't talk to a patient, it's just overwhelming. And I figured they're asleep, and you don't have to talk yeah. to them, right? But, <laughs> And then so I snuck off to an integrative uh, conference and didn't want anyone to know. And I'm like, this is more evidence-based than the stuff that we're learning. And so I ended up treating myself with, you know, my thyroid was normal, but with, you know, actually what people consider high dose T3, optimized my hormones, modulated my immune system, got my mitochondria going. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm a new person. And I was like untreatable. You know? mm-hmm. And so that's when I ended up family practice. I just took over a regular family practice and converted it to the type of stuff we do. And it was like people just lined up outside the, out the door with no marketing and just by you know fixing these patients. Yeah, it's word that, of mouth. Yeah. Best yeah. marketing. Like if you're sending out your, your healing and yeah, which people. is good because yeah. we have terrible marketing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you're here, and I, I, that's been my experience though. Is like I'm so grateful that, you know, we've come into contact because the, the message that's out there, and I've known for a long time, is it, it's not right. And, and, and I, I, yeah, the, I want to know like the populations. I mean, obviously, like when when one person is sick, it it affects the whole system it's relationships oh. it's families it's how you perform at work it's all of the people that you touch every day right so yeah, yeah it totally all true. starts with us and if you don't have somebody that can help you be if, if someone's willing to take responsibility and take care of themselves they need to be met by somebody that is capable to help them get to their yeah. best self and, and that's and, what i see with yeah. what you're doing with people. And, and the days of just relying on your doctor are gone you were going to get terrible care. And I'm used to it now, but it was kind of shocking initially when, let's say a patient's been sick for 10 years and they, they love their doctor or the doctor's caring, and all of a sudden they come to us and the patient's dramatically better. Mm-hmm. And they go back and they're excited. you think the doctor would be happy. Overwhelming majority of the time, they're not. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, that's quackery. Well, I got better. Well, just, you know, just a flu. Uh, and you're not allowed to come back to practice anymore. You know, that's the usual. Um, some will call and say, "What did you do?" And I explain. There's kind of silence. I'm like, "What's wrong?" And they're like, "That will take 20 minutes." I'm like, I can't do that. You know. So um, basically, doctors are having to get out of the insurance care model to give mm-hmm. patients the ability to get better. And the doctors have kind of allowed this to happen because they were more just. I just want to treat the patient. You know, and they just let everyone else take care of everything else. And of course, they just got stuck as this cog in the wheel and you better perform. And oh, oh didn't see enough pay. What's, what's going on? You know, hey, well, Jeff, you're, you're falling behind. You've only seen 40 patients today. So you know? the insurance company is, is setting that. Well, they, they that set the amount that. in order to cover the cost. You got to see so many patients yeah, and you don't get an... paid double for spending double the time you yeah and you have to you know paperwork now is just uh overwhelming yeah. you know and and billing and uh, one of our doctors was an er doc for 30 years and he says oh my god i can never work in the er now because yeah. uh you can't practice medicine you can save someone's life but wait a minute you didn't follow this exact algorithm mm-hmm. you know under the guise of evidence-based medicine yeah, and, but and and where are we getting that evidence, and and how are those studies being published? So can oh, you shed some light on that? Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> you know I don't want to make it too controversial, but you know you look at these journal when when I see a study in a particular journal, I will I know what the outcome is going to be, and they do little tweaks to uh, you know make that 
drug look good and they also do something they use relative risk instead of absolute risk and let's say i you have a lotto ticket i go i'm going to double your chance of winning the lotto here's another ticket okay wow 100 percent increase in the chance of winning a lotto essentially zero yeah. right right <laughs> but that's what they use and get these drugs approved and it's not absolute risk where yeah. something very rare um and they use a lot of tricks like that and um in in so many things you just look at like you know i don't want to say no yeah, be to go to drugs but yeah yeah well but, uh, and they they serve in many cases i'm sure they serve their purposes right yeah but everything can, everything has its place right but they want to give it to everybody right yeah and contrast what these drugs do versus what you're doing with peptides. Can you kind of explain how how yeah. they differ and then how would that peptide market open up and help a patient feel better? Yeah, and uh, so the, the thing with, with peptides work more like supplements in that they're pleiotrophic, they're signaling peptides that send out a signal. Where um, where Horton, they're slow on, or they're they're fast on, fast off. Um, a lot of them, they can't find a toxic dose. Like they've given, you know, a thousand times a dose to humans IV for weeks and nothing. You know, no no problems. Um, you try that with uh, Tylenol, you're dead. Water, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, but so exceedingly safe, which is which is really nice. And then meds usually go after a particular target. Mm -hmm. And the body kind of doesn't work that way. And like with BPC-157, which is uh, kind of probably the, the number one peptide, it's kind of the go-to, it does so, so many, um, it, it, it does so many things that it's kind of, kind of a, um, a homeostasis uh, mm -hmm. uh, peptide that if you have low blood pressure, it raises it. If you have high blood pressure, it lowers it. If you have a clotting disorder, which a lot of people have, uh, honestly, uh, it lowers that. It's an anticoagulant. And if you can't clot, it increases coagulation. You know, so they're kind of smart. They work with your body. They're not just like, you know, uh, doing one particular thing where all of a sudden, whoop, you went too far. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So a lot, of, is that one of the ones that you... Uh, a lot of patients will be treated. Yeah, and when we train doctors, that's kind of a go-to one. And uh, doctors think of it as a gut peptide because you know, everyone's got leaky gut yeah. from all the different foods and toxins. And what happens is these tight junctions open, allows these big proteins to get through, and then now the body starts attacking those, causes more inflammation. Mm -hmm. So as you can tell from everything, saying everything's a vicious cycle. Right. And, uh, and, and that one, it works for so many things. It works like there's one study they had, they used it for inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's mm -hmm. and um, uh, uh, it, what was it, and traumatic brain injury. Mm -hmm. And it worked for both orally. Wow. So, and, so not and even the, an injection. It's, no. it's something, it's, it's a actually pill equal either. potent that all the studies that looked at if you get orally and injectable, the dose works the same. But most doctors think of it as a gut peptide. But, and then when you combine the peptides, uh, you get even a better synergistic effect. For instance, uh, BPC-157, which you can kind of uh, think of as lowering TH2 and adding a lot of growth factors and healing. Mm -hmm. uh, you add that to, um, there's thymus and beta-4, which is the, uh, with, with the thymus that, mm -hmm. that we talked about, it's the most abundant, and it's a multi-domain peptide. I don't want to get too complicated here, but it has different parts that do different things. And there's a middle part that stimulates mast cells, mm -hmm. which is a good thing for healing, but with chronic illness, the, the way that this vicious cycle works and the immune dysfunction, it activates mast cells. So for people that don't know, can you define mast cells? Oh, so mast yeah. cells are the cells that, they're one of the cells and the main cell that cause inflammation. And in the brain, they're like microglia, yeah. and, uh, and so they're a big problem, especially people like who have the worst problems are super sensitive to everything, yeah. have um, you know, a lot of uh, allergic type symptoms, but we used to think that the mast cells secreted histidine and that was it. 
But now we found is, and they could tell by the granules of histamine when they release, but they didn't get anything else. But, we, but what was been found is that they pump out all of this inflammatory cytokines, but they may not release their histamine. And so those are stimulated in so many illnesses, for instance, people with like POTS, where their blood pressure drops, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all these neurodegenerative diseases, their brain on fire, and almost everything is associated with inflammation. Absolutely, and there's so many things. I started on this journey, um, my youngest was diagnosed with Asperger's when he was six, and he's 15 now, and I started on this journey of, you know, cleaning out his gut, and I noticed right away there was, you know, there was a shift, there was a change. Um, and but all the things I started learning about through his system, you know, inefficient mitochondria, how he was tired all the time. Like he just didn't I knew he didn't feel good. But all the things I started learning that helped him, I realized oh my gosh, these things help everybody. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so this peptides is the next level of things that I have learned that not only would help that child, but help everyone I always believe everyone's on a path wants to be on a path to high performance. They want to be the best version of themselves that yeah, they can be. Yeah. And these peptides, since I started taking them, I've had my sleep is better. Inflammation is definitely down. I had an ankle surgery in February, and I'm like, why does everybody yeah, the doctor who is say, coming out of a major healed, surgery, this healed really well. yeah. why don't they give that to people who have had a major surgery? Because the, the inflammation that is down, my tissue, I can tell, are healing better. Um, my brain fog. That's the other thing. As a you know, forty-seven-year-old woman, I'm like, oh yeah, my like gosh. Yeah, like post-COVID. You know, yeah, all, all stuff. of and these things. We're at conferences. We'll see some person like limping. Or, hey, come here, take this. Yeah. Come back tomorrow, and they're like, what the heck? Like, yeah, it's yeah. better. And it's interesting if you look at you know we treat a lot of autistic kids, mm -hmm. and if you look at their blood work, it and you put it, compare it to a Lyme patient or some chronic infection, it looks almost the same. Um, and for instance, uh, we had um, one of our first patients that came in, she sent a, uh, a video of him playing basketball, which was him staring at the basketball just going by, right? And we had to bring him in early because he was just, you couldn't get near him, just throwing the F-bomb, like, mm. you know, just going crazy. But so we treated him with a lot of peptides. We used um, uh, cell signaling um, uh, therapies. And and now he basically comes in and he wants a hug. He's sarcastic. <laughs> he gives his own shots. He's just like you, you can't believe the transformation. Yeah. And he goes back to his doctor and doctor goes, well, there's some spontaneous remission. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And, um, and I mean, all of that, like from the nervous system to the cellular health, like when we can get those things all working together, like what I have seen. And it's not ever just one silver bullet, but these peptides no. have yeah. been the biggest game changer I have seen. And I have done, I mean, from movement to meditation to nutrition. See, this is what we, we hear from, from doctors, patients, yeah. and, and there's no one single thing. So we use right. it as part of a you know whole system, yeah. but it's a big part. It's and, a big part, and it's not yeah. out there. And this is what I'm so frustrated with, is like, how in the world do we have this addiction crisis that we have and the almighty dollar being worshipped for the way that it is when, and having things like this being held back from a population that absolutely needs it yeah. so that and, we can all function better. And, and it's interesting human nature, though. It's like, you know, so many people are sick. I had to, you know, put lab sets in my pocket when I go to parties, right? <laughs> yeah. And people come up and go, oh, you know, my daughter's so sick or I'm so sick. And I go through this, 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 this. And they'll, they'll say, well, my doctor says that this is going on. Right. Like, well, well, how's that working for you? Yeah. You know, it's they, it's this fear of, and they, you know, been told, hey, this will work, this will work, and they, that, you know, to, and also they don't want, they just want, it's easier to trust your doctor, right? Yeah. And say, okay, yeah. I've been sick, and he doesn't help, but oh, he's such a nice guy, you mm -hmm. know, and he probably is, but just certain things they don't know, yeah. and if a doctor says, I don't know, stay with them because I'm telling you that means they're a good doctor. It's the ones that, oh no, that's, you know, I, I know everything about that, it's, it's terrible, you know. Remember I published a study on um, uh, the hypothalamic pituitary um, uh, adrenal axis and chronic fatigue syndrome fibromyalgia. And we found that 
they all had adrenal dysfunction, mm -hmm. right? Um, the difference was fibromyalgia had a problem in the hypothalamus and the chronic fatigue syndrome in the pituitary, and which makes sense because the pain centers in the hypothalamus. But so I gave a, a patient a pre-publication copy. It wasn't out yet, and he decided brought you know we we had him on this protocol for adrenal and gave it to his endocrinologist, kind of excited. And his endocrinologist goes, "Oh, I've seen a study. It's a terrible study." And through and, and then he says, "Now you have it. It isn't out yet." And he goes, "I don't need to read it." Of the threshold, but that's that's the typical response. Wow, yeah, it's like you know, um, I don't need to read the studies, yeah. and, and there's well, a lot of articles on that. Even the LA Times, the um, Annals of Internal Medicine, they looked and said, Hey, most doctors are practicing 10 to 20 years behind what's available in the medical literature, right? Because doctors say they read medical literature, but they really don't. Mm -hmm. And you know, they don't they don't have time, they're doing too much paperwork, right. but also they can't institute these new treatments. They can't like as a physician, I really think the core of being a physician is looking at this research and then bringing that to your patients mm -hmm. with actually informed consent, right? right? Which is key, which California just passed a law saying that a doctor cannot say anything negative about you know anything that's a standard of care against public policy oh my gosh. so and that's against hippocratic oath it's kind of like it, it came out of you know doctors saying don't get the vaccine they didn't like that although there is you know the core of medicine is is debate right right and the hey, scientific here, process it, is it is yeah it is, you know and it's some you know hey i think this you hypothesis think this. And yeah. testing and yeah they don't want any debate anymore you do that's a what, scary what they place say. to be it's very scary and people are not they don't care too much they just say oh they say it'll make safer medicine no no it is going to it it, it scares me to death and they don't understand the slippery slope yeah, know, that that's that's going to happen. I think it's happening also with everything else. Like, yeah. there's no more debate. It's uh, yeah. Uh, you you're say this person, a... you say this person. Oh, you're racist. You know, or right. whatever. And attack personally. But I love scientific debates. Right? Yeah. And I think they should have you know prime time. Let's get these controversial subjects and you know and have great a minds and have yeah. a, have a discussion. But yeah. They don't want that. And and just there is so much. Corruption. I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but uh, I've never it's, been one. It's crazy. But I'm telling you, just based on the way that I feel, having taken these peptides, and you know, part of the reason, just having you here today, I I cannot believe what is being withheld. Because the thing I love about stories is that you cannot dispute somebody's real story. Like this happens to people. Like I am sleeping better. I have less inflammation. Nobody can tell me not to say that. Yes, yeah, well, that's just, that's just anecdotal. But when you look at the levels of evidence, yeah. Okay, so we had a franchise was um, it was purchased by a hospital, okay. And they tried to do a so-called anti-aging clinic for ten years, and then we told them, you know, what we'll do, and they said, well, we don't believe you can do that, but we'll we'll do it. And it turned out it just it was a, two hours outside of Kansas City, like middle of nowhere. It just exploded, but. What happened was the doctors all rebelled, and someone told me who had lived there said they won't let you in, and I'm like, what do you mean? They they love us, you know, mm -hmm. and they won't let you in. I guarantee it. And also, you get a call, and they say, everyone with doctors are freaking out that they say you're practicing medieval medicine. You got to get down here. So I took that as, as that's what they really cared about. So I, I came in with why we're evidence based. And they're really not, which probably was not the best way yeah. to go, because you look at levels of evidence. You have, you know, uh, double blind, placebo studies, right. meta analysis, you know, single uh, blind, and then as it gets down, you know, anecdotal right. um, like cases, yeah. and then below that are societal guidelines, because they are shown to be the worst evidence because they don't change for twenty years. They cherry pick, you know, and they just basically tell people. You know, this is the way that they want it. And so these doctors were arguing, well, the you know, menopause society says this. Well, let's look at the levels of evidence. I just gave you double blind behavioral control studies, right. multiple, and you're giving me, you know, the society. worst level of, yeah. of evidence. And that didn't go over well. Yeah. And then so they said, Oh, you have to talk to this, you know, he's really mad. He's gonna oh, he's gonna you know, we need a new one. 
And so I go in, and you know, how's it going? And he goes, well, he goes, you know, my wife has been here and is sick for 10 years and been to every one of these specialists, is not better. After two visits in your center, she's dramatically better. So don't worry about the doctors, I'll take care of them. I'm like, you won't. I go, you won't. They are mad, they don't want. And then I went to this little satellite office, which is a uh, PEDS, and talked to Dr. He was told me, he was like, this is great. Then he gets a, the nurse comes to the door, he's like, you have an emergency call. And he goes, ah, oh, just what, what yeah. is it? It was the OB that was at the meeting saying, don't talk to him. <laughs> don't listen to him, you know? Yeah. And and I heard there was a, a emergency staff meeting and I heard it was like Frankenstein with pitchforks and, and torches yeah, but get them so out. Is it that the, the root and, of what they've been taught is like their foundations being See, shaken. yeah, chatter. And, yeah. and then they said, they say, they think they're better than us. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this chat as much as I am. For more great content, courses, and lifestyle, go to BeBetterMedia.tv. That was the... Yeah. Uh, when the end goal really is patient care, or should be it patient should be. care. It should right? be. Right? Not our own egos, yeah. not who... You, remember, you know the quote that's like, you never, you, you'll never know how far or how much can be done when you don't care who gets the credit? It's one of my favorite yeah. quotes. Like, yeah. why does it matter if there is something better we need to constantly learn to pivot. And one of the things that I believe, and the funny thing is it's reminded me, like learning, like constant curiosity and learning is the key to longevity, and right? And yeah. the peptides yeah. are also a key to longevity. And I'm seeing this parallel of like staying curious and just being open-minded. And then the roadblocks that you're encountering, like how do we shift this? How do we shift the patient doctor like their mentality to get this out there i mean it does feel like you're up against yeah. a really no it, and, it's, and it's tough and they'll come after you um like you can get all your patients better and they don't care but you didn't do this or that um yeah and standard doctors you know they can kill a patient and it's part look at right there it's a side effect. I mean, if we harm someone with you know, ozone or something like that, yeah, we're we're in trouble. But you know, California especially. I mean, they're trying to ban IV vitamin C and IV glutathione. You've got to be kidding me! Yeah, and uh, and they won't allow they won't allow peptides to be shipped into the state. I did just hear that from a friend that came in on a separate yeah separate meeting, and I heard that they had been using peptides you know oh, I've been using peptides for years but I have to have them shipped to Texas yeah I mean what in the world yeah and and then and we're supposed to be this like you know around here everyone oh we're health conscious everyone's trying to take care of themselves but it's it you know and so much of this comes down to that elite culture like I'm kind of at the point where like politics aside we are there is an elite culture that wants to stay at the top that is keeping yeah. everybody else down and whereas you know these peptides and I know like I'd love to hear about how you're the, the market that's out there if we can how do we create or get these out to a bigger market and when we do that do the costs come down can we make this something that that more people can access yeah and, and it's interesting I mean they try to put roadblocks every which way because they're you know fda and big pharma are you know where do where's all fda funding come from yeah. big pharma right. uh all the journals um you know try so, to get something published that goes against standard dogma is almost impossible because you know you look at nine page ads uh from big pharma they have now you can't even see the outside of the journal there's a ad wrapped around it and it just again, they're only going to publish the to yeah, hear things. They don't the want things to hear. that are benefiting them. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, the controversy is staring us straight in the face. It's the absolute antithesis of conscious capitalism. It's and at the end of everything, is it's all about making a buck, which doesn't have anything to do with patient care. No. Yeah. And but I know that in your practice, you've seen. Um, a lot of different walks of life and uh, you've solved and, and helped to repair a lot of different issues. How, um, can you just tell me um, like categorically, like some of the some of the patients that you've helped or some of the, the types of, of issues that peptides have? Oh, it's, 
it's interesting because it kind of becomes like, the, oh my God, you say bye, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. <laughs> because it's like, yeah. we, we do that, but we kind of treat, yeah, what, I mean, kind of I anything, mean, it's right, usually, like they don't pain, even, right? yeah. Pe- peptides can help chronic, like I said, my brain fog way better, so think about everything, and in the end, if everything is st- stemming from inflammation, and at the end of massive inflammation is what, a heart attack, uh, yeah, it all, seizure. It all goes with it. Uh, goes I mean, all it. of these really big things that we all hope we never get to. Yeah, but and we find so many things, and and the good thing is that really, all these complex illnesses they have at the core is this immune dysfunction, and then this vicious cycle. So it's really like, for instance, with Lyme disease, okay, and people, you know, oh, very hard to treat, take years of antibiotics, and that's what I did, you know, three and a half years of the highest dose IV it's antibiotics right that head, right? I was doing seven at a time, you know, three times a dose. I would never give a patient because of the, the danger. I remember I was in the ICU and the, the nurse are making the, uh, the shift change. They're like, oh, this is that guy that AIDS patient keeps coming up negative for HIV. I mean, my immune system was so low, and how the thing is, antibiotics, you can't give enough antibiotics if you have no immune system, the immune system has to take over. Uh-huh. But no one really thinks let's boost their immune system, and then, you know, you can give the antibiotics. And so we, like, we used to be kind of like, I dose antibiotics, it's just, you know, and do that. We found if we tweak the immune system first and fix the mitochondria and fix the gut and Which fix all the those things. Can do. And then we may often don't need antibiotics and or maybe we need it for two months or something yeah. like that. And, and the thing is too, when you're treating, I would say Lyme disease, you think you're treating Lyme, but there's probably five other infections mm-hmm. that, you know, that we can't even test for. The, the tests are you know, the very insensitive for these intracellular infections because they're not just all in the, in the serum. So yeah, we treat, you know, kind of, People who've been diagnosed, a lot of them come in with, you know, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, um, regional pain syndrome, uh-huh. and or you know a lot of mast cell activation. And you know, part of the mast cell mastermind group, smartest doctors, and, and they're amazing, but they're still kind of stuck on directly inhibiting the mast cells. Uh-huh. Okay, that's part of it. But the mast cells aren't abnormal; they're being stimulated. That's the problem. So you look upstream, and for instance, with stress, right. the body will make um, corticotropin releasing hormone CRH, which then um, goes to the hypothalamus, and you know basically it makes ACTH, and then that tells the adrenals to make cortisol. And with the dysfunction, is that the cortisol is low, but their ACTH is high, and a lot of controversy and why that is. But what the body's trying to do is it's gonna make a lot of this CRH to get the adrenals up, right? Mm -hmm. And adrenals are relative. Like if you're not stressed, low adrenals are fine. If you're stressed, you're If you're in the ICU and you have a normal level of cortisol, you're gonna die. Uh Okay, so. Because cortisol's there to to when you you need it. To help you deal with stress. Yeah, exactly. And so the body is pumping out all this CRH, which is a very, very potent stimulator of mast cells. So you'll see it's it's a high ACTH and, and low cortisol. So you want to give them a little bit of cortisol. It's not like prednisone or anything, mm-hmm. it's just physiologic dose, and bring that CRH down. That's just one little little treatment. Yeah. And people say, uh, you know, adrenal fatigue, which I don't like because it kind of gets a bad connotation, but okay. um, uh, again, published the review article, reviewed every article on that for chronic fatigue syndrome and found that, yeah, they all have it when you do really sophisticated tests, which you aren't gonna do on every patient. But and there, there's so many different aspects, you know, thyroid I love, um, you know, people are, you look at testosterone levels now, mm-hmm. and then we have kids coming in, you know, that are 22 and they have testosterone levels of, uh, of an 80 year old. And, but the thing is-, is that due to stress? Uh, stress, Inflammation, yeah, so toxins, to pesticides, Every, yeah. yeah. And the problem is with course with most tests, they take ninety five percent of the people and make that normal. So if you look at the testosterone normal range, ten years ago, ten years before that, 
it was dramatically higher. But now everyone's low, so, so now, they say you're normal. Uh, and you know, you may be the lowest two percent, right? And right. they go, Oh, that's fine. Or a lot why, of doctors and why should that be fine? Like why yeah, should we be getting it's like a worse? D minus, yeah. you know? And the doctors will keep testing until they get a normal test and they go, Okay, we don't need treatment, you know. And we find that also kids with short stature, we go to endocrinologists, oh let's let's wait and see, let's wait and see, wait and see. And then it's too late, you know. Yes, um, I've it's heard kind of like that. that. Or yeah. um, I have a whole lecture on uh, pediatric hypothyroidism and obesity. And you know, if you have an obese child, what's the chance you're going to be an obese adult if you don't do something? Mm -hmm. Huge. Yeah. And all these kids have a huge incidence of hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's, and there's kind of a reason a vicious cycle, and the doctors don't treat it. Even though, even though it's a standard by their definition, the, pay, the, the kids are really low. Their TSH is ten. But Peter's, well, let's just watch it. You know, if they yeah. lose weight, though, that will come back to normal. Okay. It will because the inflammation will go down. Right. But they're but not going to lose weight. Have, they're right. not going to lose weight because they have no metabolism. Right. Because and so, what if you can help them with that inflammation? Yeah. Which again is what the and they all have do. like you know ADD. They yes, all can't, that was the other thing they, I was going to ask. They you basically about. have fatigue. They can't concentrate, and but they say, oh, let's watch it. You know, I'm like, this you is know, now when you need to treat it. Right. You know. Yeah, because habits get ingrained, right? So when we feel a certain way, we live a certain way, and then our habits are ingrained, and we don't then we don't have the energy to develop the tools to become the person that we want to be. And I don't understand why. I mean, we life's hard enough. Exactly. But go through it when you're fatigued. Yes, and, you know. exactly. And especially as a kid, like if, if we can do something to, for, for children so that we launch them on a path rather than why would we sit around and wait? That's when their bodies are the most resilient, the most, like, it makes no sense yeah. to me. It, it messes them up and they get hardwired different. Yes, They're, it exactly. affects their brain. Um, and it's it's a lifelong yeah. problem, and and they don't, and that's what you know we see all these patients that have these you know multi system, but they kind of all fit together. But the doctors are trained to oh, let's separate this yeah. from this, and um, you know uh, everything you know from you know we're getting a lot of the kind of new thing is Sears, which is a chronic inflammatory response syndrome. Okay. Um, and you get a lot of syndromes now, right? right? And which we never had before. Like yeah. there was been mold everywhere, mm -hmm. but you know, throughout the beginning of time, but people didn't react to it because they didn't have all these toxins, their immune systems stress, so depressed. and their immune yeah. system. And almost without exception, it's you can look at like natural killer cell, then we'll look at like what's called C4A and human center growth factor beta which is a key one because it causes autoimmunity, fibrosis, like for instance, my heart was so fibrosed that it wouldn't fill. And that's why I said, you know, with rigorous, you know, cardio rehab, you can maybe get 10% better. I'm like, I'm not gonna live like that. Right. You know, and that's what I went around the world and did a lot of treatment, some things were, some crazy things, and was in Belgium and took some peptides and um, didn't think anything of it. Didn't expect like a couple days, uh, probably four or five days later, I'm like, I just walked up, I just walked up the stairs. Wait a minute. Yeah. You know what was and that? See, what did I take? You know. That is my root, uh, like my my deepest belief is that when we go through something that literally is so terrible and tragic for ourselves and then we can stay curious and learn something to, that will it, it usually is the thing that is ends up being our purpose and our passion oh, to help it's what, you, it's what you learn yeah. after residency most right. doctors are practicing you know what they learn in residency and you know annals of internal medicine and even JAMA uh, said it takes on average a proven new concept let's just say peptides mm -hmm. It takes on average 17 years to get accepted into mainstream medicine. And they found, why is that? You know, they said, well, doctors don't read medical journals. That's not the real mm -hmm. reason. The real reason is that if you give them, here's 50 studies showing that here's a better way of doing things, 
They, no, 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 no. My patients are different. Um, mm-hmm. You know, my patients are fine. Yeah. That I don't, I don't need that. So, if there are curious doctors out there or patients that hear this, um, this conversation, what, what are some of the practical things that you're doing beyond your practices to get the word out there on peptides? Yeah, I mean, I spend. Uh, I've kind of pulled back from patient care, and I love patient care, and I hate managing. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and originally I thought, okay, do more centers. So we had 22 centers, nine franchises, but then I'm like, I can't stand running it, let alone my own practice, running other doctors' practice, like a uh-huh. management role. But I love training, so we would, uh, you know, been doing for 15 years, I'd go through hundreds of journal articles, pick out five, you know, highlight and make it as easy as I can for doctors, and then we would talk about it. So you so, disseminate information, you kind of boil it down, make it something yeah, more simple. For yeah, them. and you want to get doctors that are passionate and, yeah. and really uh, have, you know, basically a thirst for knowledge and to learn more. Mm-hmm. And I'm finding, though, that there's kind of been a shift where doctors coming out of medical school, they're, they don't, like, and people say, well, well, what's the algorithm for this? Well, there is none, it's concepts, right? Mm-hmm. And it just freaks them out. Like they wanna memorize yeah. something. They're great at memorization, but they don't, and, and when they when they can't do that, it, it really kind of freaks them out. And most doctors, like 90 plus percent now, are working work for someone else. So they can't even control what they right. do. And you know, 20 years ago, it's like you go and you graduate and you hang your shingle and then you have. Okay. So you really had to like satisfy the patient and get the patient better or you're gonna lose that patient. Right. In the insurance model, doesn't it's matter. Another, it's just you're another, just gonna it's get another corporation. An, you're just gonna right? get another patient anyways. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Like, so that's for the doctors. If you're a patient, what are some of the things that you would tell a patient who isn't getting the care or the answers that they that they need to feel better? What are some of the questions that you would say for those patients and, to ask their doctor? And and it is very difficult, and it's a lot of human nature that I'm, I'm trying to figure out myself. But yeah. for instance, we had an ALS patient. We have ALS patients come in, oh. I have wheelchairs, and they're jogging now, right? And uh, and. And they go back to the neurologist. One was was diagnosed by three neurologists, and was excited to tell them they're like, "Oh, misdiagnosis by three of you," really? you know. And uh, they have the same thing. They have the same underlying. We had, you know, each thing has like this core thing, and then and then okay. and then they spread out. Yeah. But we had one person came in, and uh, so we told them all the things. Spent a lot of time, you know. Uh, educating the patient mm-hmm. which is which is key because they're going to be told by their doctor that's quackery that's you know and their friends are going to go oh that's that's crazy yeah. you know and then you have to face that moment where you're like wait am i going to stay with this and tr- maybe push the envelope a little bit or am i going to let their opinion yeah and it's, push and it's me it, aside? it yeah. really influences them so that's why you know we train the doctors you got to get them better quickly at least see yeah. see some uh, you know uh, positive says, effect. Uh, some improvement yeah. that and so we did a lot of things for him and he was mainly getting better and then uh, I told him we were going to do some treatments like it was a stem cell treatment at, at the time so it was much harder to get now but um, that he said no I don't want to do it I'm going to do enroll in this clinical trial Okay. And uh, and he said my my uh, neurologist said yeah what you're doing won't work, and the clinical trial was on stem cells. Oh <laughs> so you know yeah. And so it's then it, it had gotten into the the big pharma channel. Yeah. See, and he didn't want to yeah, go he, against yeah. his, his doctor and and that, and it's so funny. Like a lot of patients go, oh, I'm going to go to the Mayo Clinic. Okay, we'll see him. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it's almost not what do you ask your doctor it's how do you find a doctor that is into the newer better medicine yeah and so how do you recommend people find those yeah doctors like you that is is a very good question and it i would say look at some of the organizations and they have lists 
talks with doctors. Yeah, if you can um, get those, we'll put those in the show notes. Because yeah. I think that getting people those resources is huge. And uh, and it's funny, like with the National Academy of Hypothyroid, we kind of dropped the ball on it. We got so much work and someone hacked the site. And, oh, and it was like, oh my gosh. And so we have like lists of doctors that have been, been trained. And it's funny that, you know, our, so our site got kind of wiped out and our marketing person we brought in said it was too busy and wiped out. But a doctors come up and go, my practice is based on that. <laughs> Get that site back up, you yeah. know. Yeah. And because we had peer reviewed studies showing that that the standard it's a way scary that is that wrong. Got hacked. That's, I don't know. Uh, that's we a, got more, we get attacked a, constantly. Yeah. I just, like, this is not the country that I want to that I, I I just don't want it to be this way. Yeah. And you know, everything I go up against, I people are like, you know, that's that's a that's a big mountain you're trying. I'm like, if we don't fix this stuff, this country is Yeah. We're in a world of hurt already. I don't know how we're gonna fix it, but I really do believe in this parallel universe of like we have to go around the power structure and topple it because it is not doing anybody any good. Yeah. Except and for those guys at the top that are just trying to maintain their power. Yeah, it's, which it's, is a miserable existence. It's like it's it's, it's, it's totally really nowhere true. to live. And I got the opportunity to like debate the uh, A team from a, a news organization, right? Mm -hmm. Sometime. Oh. And I couldn't believe it, the hate mail I got. That yeah. it was just you're a quack, you're like, you know, nasty things. I'm like, they don't even know me. I'm like, yeah, I presented, you know, my case and you know, all yeah. that. And people are it's you know like politics now. Yeah. And that's the way medicine has turned, unfortunately. Yeah. That it's like I'm against you, I don't care what you say, la 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 la, you know. Yeah. Um yeah. But but you see it every day. You see people getting better. Yeah, yeah. And uh and people that have you know been sick for 20 years and mm -hmm. and now like when it with our uh you know peer-reviewed published data people saw 7.2 physicians now it's probably 15. Oh my gosh. So and then they're constantly told oh nothing's wrong with them it's all in your head yeah you know which they, is just a, I mean that's a mental health crisis in itself. Yeah 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 and so many people are sick and yeah and even people it's like that are functioning like you know, if you really ask them they're like yeah oh i'm really fatigued i'm anxious i yeah. can't sleep and um, really when those things get deep into you i mean if you're functioning at a level where you can hold down your job and you're just used to being stressed you don't even that's realize normal. that's normal and, and that's then it, yeah when yeah. you get on the other side of that that's when people like to feel that flow and go, oh my gosh, this is how, this is like what the real human experience is supposed to be. Not this American version of stressed out, depressed, and toxic. Yeah, that's the you norm. Know, yeah, it's not. And that, you know, that's definitely been part of my healing journey. And I'm so excited that I've now know what I know about peptides and I'm wanting to learn more and more which is why I'm yeah, so happy to Yeah, we used to have these on a basic, you know, yeah, there's so many and there's, there's actually more and more coming out um, that are very cool and they're, the one negative is they hard to deliver uh, unless mm. they're injected like orally. So we're working with, I just hired like eight scientists and uh, you know, <laughs> keep all on track of them to do, uh, different, they all work, they're big pharma scientists you know are they um, leaving big pharma and, no they work with big pharma how yeah. does that but so but they're they're okay to come work and, yeah and do yeah they they have a passion to, okay. to just to prove what well, you that's, know that's a step in the and, right direction or it's funny you talk about you know we had a media company i did kind of the media rounds was on you know good morning america and all the news stations and all that stuff and great but we hired this media company all of a sudden they say we can't work for you uh, so why? They said Wyeth said it was a conflict of interest. Mm. Wyeth? You scared of me? Yeah. Like I'm a conflict that you know, wow. one of the biggest um, pharmaceutical companies in the yeah. world. You know. Yeah. Uh, but they'll protect their uh, you know, their turf at all costs. So that's what they're trying to do. They're really trying to knock out company pharmacies, and that's where we get most of our meds. Um, and uh, and and that's kind of been. The FDA's goal—they well, want to ban supplements again. They want to ban hormones. 
uh, peptides they want to ban. Why are they trying to take us back? Yeah. Like and when when there's so much advancement in medicine and science, why are they trying to take us back? Yeah, money, money. That is the worst. And, and what they've done too, it used to be where you can compound pretty much anything within reason, and the doctor has to believe it's like you know the benefits outweigh the risk. Um, and there was a no compounding list for, for things, but you compound these other things. They changed it and they started saying, well, now it's uh, the bulk substances law. We're going to go through every med and see if it's necessary. So they have gone through thousands and they said eight are okay to compound. And when you, and when you say we're going to go through every med, like, who they, is, who the is FDA. FDA? And, yeah, and so I mean, there were a couple of doctors that spent their time, volunteered to hand them the studies and they're like, we don't need to see the studies. Like um, uh, curcumin, we don't yeah. need curcumin, we have Advil. No. Yeah, um, yeah that's everything, key 12 no, not necessary. See, these are all the things I've been, and I, I've been taking these things for the last 10 years since I started yeah. help, trying to help Matthew. And, and people and it, it, don't it, understand this is coming. Yeah. Well, for everyone out there that is feeling inflamed, that is feeling some level of toxicity, that is feeling um, a, a yeah, I mean, condition that the doctor has yeah, not solved, I mean, and they so, need to come find you. Yeah, I mean, there's so many things, even from the simple, you know, it's like, you know, I wish I just had like hormone patients and yeah. things like that. And I've written a number of review articles looking at the safety of bioidentical hormones versus synthetic. That was a big controversy, right? Yes, oh, I'd love and, to get into that one. But, you know, I reviewed every study um, uh, up to that point and looked at also the mechanism. For instance, that in doctors, if you look at OBs, they're really not hormone doctors. Mm -hmm. They give birth control pills and they take your uterus out. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't mean to bag on them, but it's, and they'll consider progestins and progesterone the mm -hmm. same. And progestins got approved because they protected the uterus from estrogen um, as well as progesterone. But progesterone and progestins have an opposite effect on the breast. One of the best ways to prevent breast cancer, take progesterone. One of the best ways to cause breast cancer, take okay. progestin. That's fascinating. And, and so I had this all down in, you know, uh, all the studies. So it went from the mechanism of action to clinical, and when you look at studies that are head-to-head, -head, progesterone versus progesterone, patients felt better, lower risk for breast cancer, heart disease, all, all the those things. All things that we need. And, and you're like, yeah. okay, it's a no-brainer. Right. And I got so much pushback. There were doctors complaining to the editor, so I'd like, send it out as a pre-publication, and saying, oh, I have a conflict of interest because I used them. Well, so a heart surgeon can't talk about heart, heart because they do heart yeah. surgery. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's, I mean, it took a year to get it published because they wanted to stop it, but it was really the makers of PremPro and yeah. all that. Well, it sounds to me in this, and, uh, this conversation, if we took ego and money, if we had a way to remove those things from everything that we've talked yeah, good about, luck. <laughs> we would make a heck of a lot of headway yeah. and make a lot of people feel better. And, and, and at one point, I was so frustrated. I'm like, how can they even like argue this? Because you know it's going to hurt patients, right? Yeah. And so I hired a private detector, a detective to find the funding for the Benipal Society, right? I, go, I want to find their, their funding. What's their conflict of interest? Because they have a ton. Mm, right. And he said, you can't believe it. It's this nonprofit funded by this nonprofit, you know. And down here, it's all funded by drug, drug companies. Company. And, but they just built it yeah. through. And so he, he gave up. And um, Yeah, but, it's uh, really frustrating when you get down to the base of it. But I think what it makes me realize is that the, the still the number one thing we can do is stay curious about our own health and keep asking questions and finding the I right doctors. That, that is the key is yeah. take the days of listening to your doctor. And I tell the patients, don't listen to me. Yeah. Question me. Go look up if you, if you have an issue, you know. Tell me what your friends say and we'll talk about it, you know. Yeah. I don't tell patients what to do. I say, here's 
these studies and here's these, what would you like to do? It seems pretty obvious, but um, uh, you know, it's again that informed consent, yeah. which now they apparently don't want us to do. I mean, um, it sounds like you and I could sit down and do a whole nother show on where California is off base on so uh, many different issues. But I want people I to be able to know <laughs> yeah. that's Nobody like for another one. Yeah, yeah, and that would be, yeah, that could, that could go on for a while. Um, but I want people to know how, the best ways to find you, how they can connect with you, and the information that, that you're putting out. Yeah, so our um, center is in uh, El Segundo, Holtorf Medical Group. Um, and then we've, which I've been uh, wanting to do with, with all the franchises that we had, I've let them pull back by whatever they, they wanted to do, but um, we decided to go ahead and restart the training program, uh, which is My Better Health, okay. and we're uh, doing it's a year-long training on peptides, uh, but also all these you know integrative uh, therapies that work, you yeah. know. And I don't know what to call myself. Like you don't say alternative. Like people think crystals or yeah, you know, integrative, functional. I mean, I kind of don't. I just think we practice better medicine. So right, that's right. why, hence the name, my better medicine. So um, again, very evidence based, but we will show doctors from day one like they're And the biggest comment we get is like, oh my god, I have so many patients that I couldn't help. And now, and a lot of times it's pretty easy. Yeah. You know, once once you know how, how to do it and safe. Yeah. And um, and there's so many, you know, tools in the toolbox. And that's the thing. And, you know, some of these sickest patients, you know, I tell them I have, I have 100 things that can help. I have 100 things that can't help. Mm -hmm. Because I can show you the studies that 90% of people got better, but you're not a study. You're a person. And yeah. it may not so... But we, you know, treat everything like a medical detective, and we keep going and digging. And if the patients are better, it's my fault. Okay, so I'm gonna find more literature and find what's missing. And right. you know, more times than not, is that we'll be able to get that patient significantly better. Yeah. And um, well, it's good to know that this is out out there that we are making progress but there's clearly a lot more progress that needs to be made yeah and, and, and then people, we tried um yeah. like this uh, no, no, no. uh tried to make the peptides much uh, uh, less expensive right yeah. and we brought them out as, as supplements they're bioidentical so um they're natural they're in the food chain they're in your body they're in mother's milk and um and we put those out uh, as uh, as supplements, so that's integrative peptides. Yes, and, that's um, what I've been using. And you know, the problems were out all the time. But, well, uh, and uh, it's understandable. The results yeah. are remarkable. And so. so I I need help. It's yeah. kind of like, uh, <laughs> so if anyone out there <laughs> needs a job, <laughs> if anyone but, uh, wants to work, yeah. All right. Um, but uh, it's it's been fulfilling. And when I was like sick with Lyme and just horrible, like with terrible neuropathy and I would take a hundred showers a day and terrible. all this that I did believe I was I thought of ending it because I was not going to live it but I said this well someday I will I will thank you because I'll be able to help people from it yeah I hope I didn't know I believe well, you're doing but, it yeah you know, you're doing you it you know so it, it is it's such a luxury uh that you get up and go wow just like normal people just get out of bed yeah. I never Stop that. I thought yeah. it took two hours. No, you know? I mean, and, and I think our health you know? is, is something we take for granted until we felt chronic pain. And chronic pain is, it's a, it is a massive, I mean, the, the mental yeah. health implications, the, the loss of energy and life and the way we relate to people yeah. and our relationships, everything. And it, it yeah. does, it affects everything yeah. and, and mentally and all. And the problem is too, doctors see like, chronic pain patients all the time, people who are fatigued, yeah. and they just get immune to it. Like, yeah, you're fatigued, so am no. I. Um, and so they don't think well, anything needs to be investigated, um, where, you know, they'll do a CBC, a chem panel, and also, it's like they won't do hardly any tests. You know, mm -hmm. that Kaiser will bonus the doctor at the end of the year for the, the least amount of money they spend on a patient. 
you know, so yeah. so they don't want to do the test. The incentive and, is not, know. yeah, that is not a pro-health incentive. So, you know, I've seen it, what you're doing, and I encourage anybody out there that really isn't getting the answers or the results that they need and they're struggling to come and find you and connect with The weirder you. it is, that we love it. It's a All challenge. right, you've got to love people that <laughs> love pro- the puzzles. I love it. But so, most of the things we've yeah. seen, people, like, yeah. they're told that, you know, and, and when you know, we look at, you know, all the vets when we started you know, mm-hmm. treating the vets and uh, with the post-traumatic stress and it fits right in that yeah. model. And I was at a, a little cocktail party or just a little get together and uh, was talking to this guy and he's just all depressed, his wife divorcing him, he's a vet. This is, and, yeah. and he said, well, the, I have all these symptoms and the VA says that it's all in my head. And I'm like, let me guess, you have that, 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 mm-hmm. like, shut up. How would you know that? And I'm like, well, that's usually what happens. And then like, he starts crying, I start crying. Yeah. And um, and I tell him, come in, we'll, we'll treat you, uh, you know, no, no charge. And they don't come in. I don't know why. I don't know if it's that, wow. like, uh, they need to be, you know, self-sufficient or something. Yeah, it's but. hard for people to ask for help. But when you know that, like, on the other side of it, and I know you've seen things that have really cross the boundaries of of what modern medicine would say is possible and some of those stories are you know coming through here on things yeah. we're working on or but it's it, it the VA and and the concept of what our veterans go through to fight for this country and come back oh. and then not be met with the best health care that they could they possibly the they should have of anybody for what I they go totally through agree. Like, they should yeah. have it and so I commend you for being you know in that for serving that population it's it is and and there were simple questions too it's like you look at even the cdc says you know at least you know uh 80 percent of people over the age of i think it was 50 have at least one chronic illness due to the thymus involution Mm -hmm. okay why don't we just get everyone thymus yeah, you know, thymus. Because uh, then thymic we wouldn't peptide. need all of these medications. And so to be safe, we can't find so a toxic level. Yeah. you're going to prevent all these, you know, basically diseases of aging. Right. Um, and the, like, simple questions like that. Yeah, you which know? you can do through a peptide that is going to have far less side effects, and and treat way before the problem is has. Yep. And you look at the studies. Metastasis. And I want to bring up yeah. cancer. That's a taboo. But you look at the studies when, you know, or let's say someone gets chemo mm-hmm. and, you know, uh, let's say colon cancer. Yeah. And they get chemo and they say, oh, you're cured. That means five years. Yeah. I'm telling you, six, seven years later, it's everywhere. And what is the biggest determinant of that is your natural killer cell function. So if you can, peptides can get your natural killer cell function up. You're yeah. the precursor to cancer. You have what you need to then fight. Then you're going to be able to yeah. fight because now it just is, is yeah. free to go. Because you never get all of it. There's We have cancer in yeah. the body. And they also wipe out the mitochondria. So they have brain fog. They have depression. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they don't know why. And they go, oh, no, it's not. You know, you're, you're, yeah. you're fine. Um, and, I mean, it's just there's so many all areas. Of, yeah. And, and really you're just describing American life. And all of the things that we're fighting as families and people in the workplace every single day. And if we can get in with baseline, with these peptides and so many of the other treatments that you're using in your office, we're, we're, we're ahead of the game. So I am going to encourage everybody to find integrative medicine, to find peptides and see when you're not being treated and you're running into roadblocks, this is where you need to look. Right? Yeah. 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 So and all of this stuff is going to go on the show notes everywhere where people can find you. And, um, you know, just the, I encourage people to stay curious. Yeah. And, it, and yeah. we're going to put uh, back up, you know, all the practitioners onto the training and that, yeah. um, we're going to um, try to make a, a portal so patients can find uh, beautiful you know, the, the doctors. That, That's that parallel that universe that, would, that, would that I'm talking time. about. Yeah. yeah. You got to go around this power structure because it's messed up. And it's interesting, and you look at, you know, some of these sites like Sermo. Doctors are miserable, right? Okay. In the insurance model. Yeah. So I mean, they're not really the problem, and they're they want to get out, right? But they don't know how. And you know, yeah. and I tell them learn something really well, 
and get out of the, insur- the insurance, insurance model, and they but they can't see that. They, yeah. like, well, it's it's like anything. It's stepping yeah. out into the unknown. It's stepping. It's being uncomfortable. It's all the things when we're scared that it, we're always a little bit afraid to do something yeah. new and different. But it it is where we get the biggest gains. I mean, it it and it's happening. I've seen it in your practice. I've seen it in the peptides I'm taking. And I encourage people to look yeah. this stuff up. When, there I, when I first started medicine, I wanted to get out. I'm like, yeah. this is ridiculous. Yeah, and you look know? where you've come. And and look uh, at the people you're helping. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's an interesting a, life. You never know where. Yeah, you know. that is so true. Amen to that. So I really thank you for this conversation. No, I love, so thank you so much. There's so much in this that people are going to learn, and, and it's going to help them to, you know, treat themselves better. And well, it's interesting. We talk more people. about the human element. I'm used yeah. to just like going through peptide after peptide. After yeah. Peptide. So yeah, there was a lot of peptides. So yeah, we didn't we didn't talk about many. So it wasn't really you know. The medical thing, but I think this is good. For, yeah. yeah, I know. I I, I tend to for do people. that. I take you out of your comfort. Well, because yeah, I, well, I, I think they have to take that first step. <laughs> your thought is so elevated. So I thank you for sharing so much of that with us today. And I do think there's a lot in here that people are going to wonder why they haven't known about this, and it's going to make them curious and come find you. So yeah, I think, thank I, you I think for have to make sharing the first step. that. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening to what I meant to say. If you enjoyed this conversation, you know what to do. Subscribe, rate, review. And for more great content, courses, and lifestyle, go to BeBetterMedia.tv.